Hi there, Neil Clark of Falkirk Piping, www.falkirkpiping.com and on Facebook under Falkirk Piping and Glen Berry Folk Duo. This is lesson 14 in our How to Learn the Bagpipes series. In lesson 13, we explore the movement known as the grip or the lem lewis. In this lesson, we are going to progress just a little bit further to the mo movement known as the Torluith. The Torluith is more or less a natural extension of a grip that sounds a lot heavier. The main difference is that we will start the Torluith with a G grace note, we then perform a grip and finish with an E grace note with the exception of, uh, no, that's what we're doing anyway, but the, the, the D will be different. <clears throat> Let's just have a look at the most basic. Terluth, we're going to start on low A and finish on low A. To perform that terluth, we start with a G grace note to low A, closing down, as in the grip, to low G, performing a substantial D grace note on that low G, and instead of just bringing the themal note up as in the grip, we then return to low A with an E grace note. Let's go through that again. G grace note to low A, low G, D grace note to low G, E grace note to low A. Please pause the video and practice that low A terluith now. If you took your time with that embellishment and didn't rush it, then you should have managed absolutely fine. What we're going to do now then is practice the other notes in the scale with terluiths and returning at all times to low A. Remember, as in our lesson with the grips, that the D to Lewis will be different. We'll just go through that now, in fact. You will begin with a G grace note to D, close down to low G as usual. Instead of performing a D grace note though, you will perform a B grace note to low G before finishing with an E grace note to low A. Going through that again, G grace note to D, low G, B grace note to low G, E grace note to low A. We'll do this scale, ask you to practice it, and then we will discuss some of the common faults encountered in Terluith playing. So, progressing through the scale and returning to low A at all times. When we reach the high G to Lewis, instead of a G grace note, we will use a back or thumb grace note. And on the high A to Lewis, no grace note at all to begin the movement. Please pause the video and practice that scale now. I hope you did okay with that scale. As usual, if you take this slowly and deliberately, especially after having completed the previous lesson, the grips, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. Please do not change the way that you perform these terluths. You can increase your tempo at any time, but all the elements of the terluth must be in there and they must balance. No element of the terluith should be shorter or longer than any other. Looking at fault finding in this uh, movement, one of the most common faults 
is to raise the low A at the end of the terlouth before applying the E grace note. What you then get is this. Now, it may be difficult to detect that, <coughs> but you will hear it. It's a form of crossing noise, really. Um, please make sure that when you come off the low G, you raise the E and the A together before applying that E grace note. It can be difficult to detect that you are actually doing this. As with other crossing noises, 50% of the remedy is purely making sure that the person making the mistake can actually hear it. Some people can't. So listen carefully for this. Again, there is a rhythm to producing the Torluth in exactly the same way as there's a rhythm to producing every other embellishment. In this case, it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So if you hear more or less components there, you are omitting or adding a note. Now, we've done the Terlouth scale from low A to high A, every time returning to the low A. And I'd say that you're going to encounter it played like that perhaps 80% of the time. There are, however, occasions where you will start on a note and return to that same note. This is usually encountered on the notes B and C. Let's just have a little practice at that. The only thing that changes is the end note. The embellishments remain exactly the same. So the B Remember the usual point with the B. Make sure that two fingers, in this case in fact three, are raised at the same time, otherwise you'll get that climbing and extra notes. Let's have a look at that again. And the C. So, the B. And the C. Please pause the video and practice the Terlouth starting and finishing on the B and C note. That's more or less us. There is also a low G Terlouth, which is almost exclusively used in P -brock. We're not going to include it in this lesson, as it's unlikely you will encounter it until you actually start playing Pibroch, which of course you will because everybody loves Pibroch. You should, it helps your playing. Anyway, <clears throat> let's have one look again at the basic scale from low A all the way up the scale, returning again to low A on the conclusion of the Terlouth. Before I do that, just a plea, please play these Terlouths properly. Um, I have had the result twice of people coming to me for lessons and then returning to their band and being told that they are behind the band. I was not surprised in the slightest at this because I'd heard the band and I was totally satisfied that my pupil was in fact one of the very few and possibly the only person in the band who was playing the Terlouis properly. So of course they were behind. The rest of the band were missing out at least one element of the Terlouth. It's easy to do that in a band situation. Bands do not affect your playing unless you allow them to affect your playing. You must continue with your own individual practice and make sure that you are performing these embellishments correctly. Anyway, back down off my high horse and let's hope that I can finish this video off by playing this scale correctly. Please 
please enjoy the Terluis. They're there to be played properly and, and, and relish them. They're a really good movement. Uh, played properly. And please, once you do play them properly, take them to the tunes and play them properly again. You will be, perhaps then, in 50% of pipers who actually play the things properly in tunes at all times. Remember, in the D Terluith, it's a B grace note. So, in the next lesson, we will more than likely introduce a tune to go with these grips and terluths, which will be the almost 600-year-old tune, Terry Bus. Uh, a lot of people don't like it because it's very much a beginner tune. Uh, but I do like it. Very old tune demands respect. So, this is Neil Clark of Falkirk Piping, www.falkirkpiping.com and on Facebook under Falkirk Piping and Glenbervie Folk Duo. Have a good time with the Terluths and happy piping.